Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, citizens of Veradora, it's Friday night and you could be doing absolutely anything right now. You could be at the pub. You could be out clubbing. You could be seeing friends, but instead you are doing the correct thing. You are listening to us. We are about to give you the Friday of your lives. It's 9 p.m. It's all in. Welcome to my party, we're just getting started A life is a dream or a nightmare scarring Hand me a drink cause I think I'm going all in Get me a shrink, who can catch me when I'm falling? Cover up my scars, flip the handlebars Crash it in my car, wake up in a bar I'll be a superstar, just on my avatar This world is so bizarre, empty out the reservoir Yeah Six shots, yeah, straight to the face And I wanna get lost, I'm sick of this place Don't know how to stop when I'm feeling this way So I'm taking six shots till I'm feeling okay I think I'm going crazy Don't think I'll get on safe So I'm taking six shots all straight to the face I'm taking six shots, are you coming with me? I'm taking six shots, yeah, straight to the face And I wanna get lost, I'm sick of this place Don't know how to stop when I'm feeling this way So I'm taking six shots till I'm feeling okay I think I'm going crazy Don't think I'll get on Straight to the face I'm taking six shots Are you coming with me? Sometimes you need to let loose Grab juice, get goose Tattoos, taboos Get screwed Loosen up buttercup All those hate comments Will never make you feel enough We're all adequate graduates Hearts full of calluses But we know calculus Damn, ain't that fabulous Can't wait to apply All those mathematicus But we can't get a job That pays Enough, I'm about to pop off. Fuck you, you're lost. We all know that we never really want a boss. So I'm gonna do what I want to. Something I can't undo. Yeah, I'm gonna do what I want to. Something I can't undo. I'm taking six shots, yeah, straight to the face. And I wanna get lost, I'm sick of this place. Don't know how to stop when I'm feeling this way. So I'm taking six shots till I'm feeling okay. I think I'm going crazy, don't think I'll get on safe. So I'm taking six shots all straight to the face. I'm taking six shots, are you coming with me? I'm taking six shots, yeah, straight to the face. And I wanna get lost, I'm sick of this place. Don't know how to stop. This way. So I'm taking six shots till I'm feeling okay I think I'm going crazy Don't think I'll get on stage so I'm taking six shots all straight to the face I'm taking six shots, are you coming with me? Well, well, well What's going on? <laughs> Good Hello. evening. Good evening, Ben. How are you? Well, I'm as well, well, well as can possibly be. You? Yeah, you look like a barrel of laughs. I feel like a bloody <laughs> barrel of laughs right now, John. I tell you, I just... It's Friday, at least we've made it. We've made it to the end of the week. Another week has passed and we are still breathing. So Indeed. I guess that is, you know... Um, oh, look, good evening, Ben, Jaipo, and Chaz. Chaz is, now get Chaz is now actually getting welcomes and, and the like, so, you know, that's, that's cool. That's cool. It's, it's a bloody stuff that... <laughs> Talk to them. Oh, God, he's... <laughs> you really need to chill out. He's been fighting spiders forever. Yeah, those those things Ch Chaz is um, telling me. He's been telling me that 
he's got plans. He has plans, and you shall see those plans shortly. They shall come to fruition, probably over I the mean, weekend. But, but I, I must say, people, I must say that the fact that he's been talking to a stuffed bear has been concerning me all week. He keeps telling me the bear has plans, and I'm like, the the bear's an inanimate object, John. Do we need to, do we need to call somebody? That's what you That's what you say. That's what you say. Let's see. The proof will be in the pudding. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm just saying it's a bit concerning when you keep telling me I've been talking to that goddamn bear. It's like, really? He's a great listener. A I can imagine. I can imagine he's he's nothing but a great listener. I would think. <laughs> so um, so first beer since he's born. <laughs> Cheers, baby. Cheers, baby. Cheers. Ka-ching! Ka-ching! Ka-chow! Spiders are our friends. They eat disease-carrying uh, flies, says Tony. Well, they can be our friends outside of my studio. That's, you know, you enter into my space, you enter into my realm, my domain. It's fair game, baby. I don't care. It's fair game. I used to be, and I mean, I am still scared of them, right? It's an irrational fear, and I'm completely aware of that. But well, is it? A little bit... Is it irrational? I read a, I, I just, I love, I loved horror stories as a kid, right? Loved horror movies, right. loved horror stories. And I used to read horror stories probably before I should have. Because I'd finished like, I'd finished like, you know, the you know, Blighton books before I was 10. I was reading yeah. Sven Hassel's Wheels of Terror by the time I was 11, 12, right? Okay. <laughs> I, I was watching 18 horror movies long before that. Yeah, but we didn't have video recorders when I was no, 11, I know, mate. I, yeah, yeah, I know, but, but what I'm saying is, I think me and you have probably shared quite a similar yeah. path of and childhood. Then, then I um, I read old Dennis Wheatley's books as well, and I was reading horror stories, and I was reading one horror story about a spider that crawled into someone's ear on one night when they were sleeping. Mm. And it ate through into their brain laid eggs and then all these spiders hatched in their brain and the person went slowly mad as the spiders ate his brain and i fucking just didn't like it i didn't like right. it and i didn't like spiders can... after that either i i wouldn't <laughs> and I then wouldn't, i wouldn't but then the other day on twitter somebody posts a video of a spider crawling out of someone's ear no fuck that no no do you know what i am i am I, I, I own ear defenders because of, you know, sensory issues. I think I might start sleeping with them on. Just, just stick them on. Go to sleep. It's all good. It's all good. Um, I just stick on my ear defenders. Go to sleep. And uh, I tell you what, though. When when I am having a bit of a, a bit of an issue, sticking those things on and just blocking most of the world out is one of the most calming and peaceful things you can possibly do. It really is, especially if inside all of the noise, the wife is nagging me. Just that, that's fine. Oh. That's fine if you don't suffer from tinnitus. Yeah, I don't at the moment. Surprising, considering how loud I listen to music yeah, and how much I play music, but I, have, I don't. I have a her horrendous tinnitus, so the last thing I want is silence. Oh, yeah. So I mean, I go to sleep. I go to sleep either watching YouTube or with music playing, mm. and and it usually runs all night. I just I need if I wake up, I I need noise to get back over. I used to use white noise, you know, but. Sometimes I couldn't fall asleep, so I ended up watching stuff and then, you know, I'm probably absorbing a, a lot when I'm sleeping. Yeah, it's you probably, probably why I've got are. All, you... It's probably why I've got all these mad <laughs> ideals. <laughs> you probably wake up at know things about the royal family of the country of Georgia, and you're yeah. like, why do I know that? Yeah, because the thing is, YouTube <laughs> starts playing stuff that you've not chosen. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I wake I wake up sometimes and it's like a religious thing or something going on or something about mud floods or something. I'm getting, What's this guy talking about? This is nonsense. <laughs> absolute. I, I mean, the absolute nonsense that you do come across and you start sending me. Look at this UAP guy. Isn't he talking a lot of utter shite? Oh, but he is. Many fucking... he, he really is, yeah. But the, the thing is, uh, and he's so he, boring. He, how, but how did he get so many? How does he get so many viewers? 
When he, I mean, the guy was so boring. I mean, I think I don't think we are that boring, but this guy was like on a, a scale of on a boredom scale of one to ten, where ten is absolutely you know I I died three weeks ago and I'm now buried in a coffin. Bored, you know. He's he's a fifteen. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I really do. Um, he's I worse think it's than because. Sorry, he's he's worse than Nigel Mansell. I think it's because his viewers actually hit the share button. <laughs> Could be. Could be. Could so anyway, be. Troll be. Room, welcome to Chasing Descent Live All In. Um, who we got? Julie DW, Shilene, Emma, oh. Red Eye. Von, Von's not there, is he? Beats he is tape. There, won't they? Tony, good to see you, Tony. Um, so if they don't have teeth, how do they eat flies? Um, the, the Vaughn, Vaughn is there. Autoplay always goes to Lex. Lex Friedman. Uh, I hate Lex Friedman. Um, uh, I'll tell you what, my interview tomorrow, you better be here, 9pm tomorrow night. Uh, that will be more. It will be more interesting than anything that boring bugger Lex Friedman has ever put out. Are you talking I to get me? about three minutes in. No. Oh, right. The okay. interview I'm doing tomorrow yeah. night. Right, will be far more entertaining, interesting than anything. How the hell has Lex Fridman got so popular? It really doesn't make any sense. The guy is so dull and so boring. <laughs> he's like, he's the epitome of dishwasher. No, not dishwasher, yeah. dishwater. <laughs> well, the thing is, I understand how Rogan. <laughs> I understand how Rogan is so popular. I understand because he puts on an entertaining show. He he buys into things. He has a gen, you know, genuinely interesting conversations. Whereas Lex Fridman is just so damn boring. Who he mentioned is... who mentioned Rogan? I did. Oh, right. <laughs> they, do, they, they do the same thing basically. Uh, yeah, right? yeah, they do. They do. But 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 Beats and Tape says Lex is yeah Lex is dry. It's the people that go on there. How the hell? Okay, if Lex Fridman contacted me and said, "Oh, oh do you want to come on the podcast?" I'd go. Oh, no. I think I'll fall asleep, Lex. I'm going to be honest <laughs> with you. I think I'll fall asleep before we get to the end of it. No, but you wouldn't because you'd be driving it. That's the thing. That's what he relies on. He relies on interesting guests. See, the problem with us is that we. Are we are the we we are talkative. We like to be heard. I mean, sometimes we talk over each other. So that's the problem sometimes when it comes to guests because sometimes you don't get a fucking look in. That's why we've had to start doing our interviews with one on ones because we but gang I'll up on them. The, <laughs> I hold the phone, John. Hold the phone. I have to address the anger in the troll room right now. Oh, about whoa! My, about my new piece of set decoration. About oh. my new piece of set decoration. What set um, decoration? Well, uh, well, first of all, I was I was shopping in Tesco's the other day, and they had this this is these cages, bargain bin cages, just wheeled out, and they had a whole load of these in them for forty four p each. Ben, and do you know what? Ben can't avoid a bargain. <laughs> I'm a sucker for a bargain, baby. I'm a sucker for a bargain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? If you don't like it, guys, it was 44p. I was just testing the waters of the piece of set decoration here. Uh we can we can try something else. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. That's yeah. fine. 44p. 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 And and I thought I would troll some people. That's really <laughs> realistically. I just thought I'd troll some people. I wondered how long it would take, and it didn't take that long. Well... It's not... It took it took about 15, well thirteen minutes. That's not bad, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> right, shall we? Um, shall we start or not? Shall we? What do you want to start? I, shall we start? Well, oh, Vaughn says he likes it. Thank you, Vaughn. Uh, uh, that's a bit of colour, Vaughn. I was actually oh, saying to him forty-four p. I was saying to him the other day that that brickwork thing is. It's kind of tired, you know, and he, yeah. he, 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 he's talking about changing it anyway. And, I'm going to completely you know. change the set. Completely change. I've got plans. <laughs> he's got plans, just like Chaz. 
Chaz has got plans. <laughs> uh, Adam said 44p's worth of inclusivity. It's well, there you go. Exactly, Adam. That's a cheap virtue signal. I'll give you that. It really is. 44 bloody P. Uh, Cellini says, get the feckin' flag down. Um, well, it can remain. It can remain for tonight's show. Well, i tell remain. you what, though. i tell you what. Get get a reasonable donation on anyone, and the flag will come down instantly, won't it? Will uh, it? Well, you tell me. If they put in a reasonable donation, I think the flag, I think you would drop your flag like, you know, like a pair of hoors out uh, panties. <laughs> 44p, the price is 44 pounds. <laughs> 44 quid. <laughs> oh my god, and you think I'm tight? <laughs> For 44 quid, I will sign the flag and Whoa, I will send, send it, it to, to you. whoever. Cool. Whoever. Yeah. Uh, uh, In fact, uh, uh, for 44 the... quid, he'll sign the flag, he'll send it to me. Who will sign the flag, and I'll get Chazzy's paw print put on it, and then we'll send it to the person that donated. How's that? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yep, no, I'm, I'm down with, the, I'm down for that. Yep. So, so there you go. There's the gauntlet. It's been laid down. Um, but I'll sign the flag. John will sign the flag. Chaz will paw print the flag, and uh, the, the price of postage between all of those places will be included. Yeah, yeah, we'll 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 pay for the postage. How's that sound? <laughs> well, they, there you go. Do you know what? I just thought it would be a, a bit of light trolling and a bit of fun. And I, I honestly did think it would take longer, but we shall see. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's start with the. Uh, take me, take me on a ride, uh, and tell me what you would like to talk about. Where where shall we discuss first? I don't quite know what you're doing with your hands and things but be careful because you you broke your audio up there while you started sorry. that sorry okay no i'm just i'm just saying you know oh, i'm a little bit hyperactive yeah i know how many of them have you had you don't want to know oh jesus but that's just the answer right okay let's start well right first of all i have a i have an apology to make I made an erroneous statement today on Twitter that was pointed out to me and I made this erroneous statement um, the other day on one of our shows when I said that the age of consent in Japan was 13. And I, I was wrong because the Japanese actually increased the age of consent up to 16. In July 2023... <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't that far out. <laughs> no, you weren't that far out. And also, um, let's quickly revisit last night's rabbit hole, which I really enjoyed, by the way. Um, I, so did, did many get, other get... people. Over 150 of them, I think. Go on. Anywho, um, Ian Huntley has admitted to yeah. the, the double murder of, of, of the young girls. Um, he has expressed remorse and said he will never apply for parole. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, that is just something that wasn't included last night that I think is important to add extra context. Mm -hmm. um, Ian Huntley has... Is it, he's recorded. He's on recording saying this. He admitted to the double murder. He... Um, Which... He, he, yeah, okay. He's, he wants to be forgiven, and he says he will never apply for parole. Okay, well, I, I think for forgiving him is a big stretch for the people that were involved. Well, I don't think he should ever be forgiven, no. no. Um, I think the little bastard should rot. And, and it adds credence to my theory that the, the kids were placed near to the US base as misdirection. I, I think you could be right. Yeah, I think I am. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think you are right. Um, shall we move on to today? Shall we? Go on then. Let's let's do it. Let's right. Do so it. um, so see these um. Remember the remember I mentioned the climate warriors. I, I hadn't really thought it through, but I have now. Do you remember Biden's started this climate warrior camp for kids thing? Yeah, the the, the brainwashing scout. Yeah, yeah, it's more than that. He's paying them fifteen quid an hour to go and deliver democratic leaflets. <laughs> He's paying for votes. Um, is is that legal? 
No, it's not. No, it's gonna... completely against the law. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's against the Constitution. <laughs> I'm not so sure much of what Joe Biden does could strictly be called legal. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> to, I, I really am starting to think, boys and girls. I've said it before and I'll say it again, but Corn Pop was a good dude. I tell you, you know who came up with us? I'm pretty sure Jill came up with us because she doesn't have a Scooby, but I'm sure she's pulling the, the strings. So I'm pretty sure yeah, Jill came up with us and thought, this sounds like a good idea. We can get extra votes this way. That's what they're doing. They're buying votes. That's completely illegal. Yeah, it is. Well, it, I would, I would imagine it is. I mean, obviously, I don't live in the United States, that's, but I can say that is illegal. From, from, what, <laughs> from watching over from this side of the pond, what I can tell you is this: it don't look very legal. It's a banana it republic, mate. It's a banana republic, and you know what? Democrat Bob Menendez is now been up, up, is now up on bribery charges. Because they raided his house and found money <laughs> and safes on their beds, stuffed in clothing. <laughs> There's fucking money all over his house. <laughs> Probably lying in the walls as well. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's, like, it's like that. What was that movie with Tom Cruise, the, the Gunrunner one? It's a bit like that. There's fucking money everywhere. This guy's Did been ever... taking them hand over fist. He's been he he's he's been doing the same as the big guy. No, I wouldn't. It, well, I ca I can't say that for sure, but it certainly looks like he's been doing the same as the big guy, as uh, you know the the the, the big daddy, the big papa. Yeah, Tito don't mention Pete, the name. We'll, like uh, we won't get we won't get ad revenue for that show either. Well, why, why, why do you think I called him Peter? P P Pedo Pete. Pedo Pete. Pedo Pete. Pedo Pete. Pete. Yep. Right, so yeah, so it looks like... Apparently uh, they found 800k worth of gold bars too. <laughs> yeah, they did. I mean, why not? Just why not? I mean, why not? <laughs> the guy's obviously just gone nuts. <laughs> yeah, I'll have that, I'll have that, I'll take that, I'll see this. Bloody hell. So, um, right, so anyway, um, oh. Bob Iger? Rumble, ladies and gentlemen. Bob Iger? Yeah, we'll go with Bob Iger in a second. Just Rumble is trending right now, ladies and gentlemen. So if you look at the pinned comment in the in the comments there or in the chat, there is a link to our Rumble channel and everything will be there and backed up there going forward. So make sure you subscribe to our Rumble channel. Uh, because if you don't, we won't be inclined to use it, quite frankly. Yeah, so, well, I mean, <laughs> I, I made an erroneous statement on Twitter again yesterday. Because yeah. someone said, why are you on YouTube if everyone's banned off YouTube? Uh, why aren't you on Rumble? And I said, because we've been on Rumble since day one, over two years. We have. Um, we have been monetized since day one. We have. And I said, and we've made 46 pence. And I was completely off the ball because we haven't made anywhere near 46 pence, have we, Ben? We have made, we have made over the entire <laughs> lifetime of the channel, 43 cents. 43, 43 cents. cents. <laughs> and, and, and that's only theoretical money because we have never been given this money. It's just theoretical at, the, at this particular moment in time. But uh, any, anyhow. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, anyhow, Bob Iger. So, for those of you who don't know who Bob R or Robert Iger is, he is the current Chief Executive Officer, CEO of the Walt Disney Company. Well, the old CEO who then placed him the other CEO and then supplanted the other CEO to come back, even though the other CEO was actually just trying to get on and make money, which is clearly something... Well, up until yesterday, Disney didn't seem to want to do... But they were having an investor meeting in Orlando, Florida, yesterday. Bob Iger was there, and he got out the white flag, John. Oh, what? He what? said it's time it... to quiet the noise. Uh-huh, okay. And stop agenda-driven content. Oh, oh really? Has he been... Did him and Sunak have a meeting? No, what's happened is this. Um, he's realised other Bob was right. 
You mm-hmm. can't be political. All they have done as a company over the past maybe six, seven years is turn off half of the population <clears throat> with this agenda-driven shite. Yeah, more than and half. They are, they are starting to feel it in their pocketbooks, yeah, but... and that's why... They... Yeah. Yeah, because they, they turned off their core, they turned off their core um, visitors because their core visitors are Middle America. Well, yeah, and their core visitors in Florida are Floridians <coughs> with, uh, you know, and South Americans passes. and South Americans. But the the Floridians didn't want to go. But he also announced that you know we're going to basically we're going to quiet the noise. And instead of focusing on any kind of content, we're going to double our expenditure to $60 billion over the next 10 years into parks, resorts, and experiences. Meaning they really do just want to focus on getting people back through the door. They, they this, I, it, It's not going to go away overnight. Mm-hmm. Okay, It's not going to go away o- overnight, but I guarantee you are going to see a major shift in that company and they're gonna. There's gonna be a return to at least an attempt at quality stories rather than agenda-driven crap because they know this stuff doesn't make money. It doesn't make money. It loses money for them. I wondered because I saw something. I wasn't really paying attention, but I saw something about they're making changes to some of the Star Wars prequels or something. Well, sort of, um, and sort of not. Right. So currently, with this new Ahsoka series. They're essentially trying to, I think by the end of it, wreck on the law of the sequel trilogy. So, you know, the ones the Disney made with Ray and fucking Finn and all of that. Yeah. Um, they're, try- they're trying to take focus away from that and, and into this new, well, I say new, uh, fan favourite, Star Wars fan favourite from the 90s, Big Baddie Grand Admiral Thrawn. Yeah. Who is... can't, can't they just do like a Dallas and have somebody step out of the shower and go, it was all a dream? <laughs> Well, one would hope so. You say prequels are shy, and you know what? I I used to agree with you, but they've grown on me. I, oh, it's, no. They have. They, they have. When you compare them to what Disney have made, except Rogue One, which is a brilliant movie, by the way. Um. What? Well, Rogue One is a brilliant movie. I I I, re- I really enjoyed it. Um. But when you compare the prequels to what's been coming out recently, yeah. They look really, really good. I'm not going to lie. Okay. But Hayden Christ- Hayden Christensen's back right now as Anakin Skywalker in sort of weird Force Ghost form, and he played Darth Vader in the Shit Obi Wan show as well. But he is the best thing about it so far. I, I, I actually <laughs> did enjoy that that one. What was the the one where the guy escaped from the prison? Was it, it was Andor? Andor. I quite enjoyed that. That was actually all Andor right. Was- well, yeah, it was a completely different animal. Once again, they didn't use volume tech. They didn't use volume tech. They built massive sets at Pinewood Studio. It looked great. It was, you know, story-driven and not agenda-driven. Yeah, it looked good, yeah. And they did yeah. a fair bit of outside shooting as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they did. Yeah, um, it was good, it was uh, good. Uh, and you can really tell. You can really tell the difference. Um, Adam, the animated Bad Batch first season was okay, and then after that was shite. <sighs> Okay, right. Um, let's. There's some serious stuff, I suppose. So let's um, let's cover the serious stuff. Um, Poland, yeah. Poland, right? Has uh, did you see Biden refusing to shake Duda's hand? I did not, but yeah, it doesn't shock or surprise me. Right. So Poland has suspended weapon supplies to Ukraine. Right? I'm not shocked. And the president has said um, at this point in time, Ukraine is like a drowning man. And you know that sometimes you can't rescue a drowning man because they're so powered by adrenaline and fear that they drag you down with them. So that's also, his explanation, and I think it's very good analogy. I think it's a good analogy, but also people have to remember that, that Duda and Poland have probably got a bit of a chip on their shoulder owing to the fact that Ukraine killed two of their citizens on yeah. their soil with rockets, and then blamed Russia and asked for a nuclear strike. Yeah, they did. <laughs> they did. They I did mean, that. That, that says all fact, yeah. So, um, and our, our second country, Bulgaria, right? <laughs> After Veridora, of course. Our second country, Bulgaria, is uh, striking over, the farmers are striking over having to buy expensive EU grain over 
cheap Russian grain, or sorry, having to buy, or the government want them to buy expensive Ukrainian grain over cheaper Russian grain, which is better quality, apparently. Um, so they're not very happy about that. The body that is the European Commission want them to do this. Yeah, yeah. Well, why don't they just turn around and go, who elected you? Well, I, the thing I is, and, and this. I, I'll, I'll, I'm actually going to go through this on Sunday, right? But yep, okay. every country in the European Union has accepted that they will be ruled by the EU. Well, they really should take a second look at that. They, they should. Well, we did it as well. Thanks. Well, of course we did. But, you, you know, and, and let's face it, guilty as charged, I voted Remain. Yeah. Because I didn't know what I was voting for. I, I wasn't as politically tiv, I guess, as I am mm. now. And I didn't know the ins and outs of the Brussels system and how it does and doesn't work and, and what real autonomy the countries have. Yeah. So now, I tell you what, now I'd go... Yeah. Would, yeah, I mean, the yeah. EU could could be a workable such it could be a workable trading block if it was set up differently, but it's not. That's the problem. Well, just return it, to, return it to how it was. Well, return it, it to its it, original intention. It never really was. That's the thing. It was always it was always what it is. They just had it more. Yeah, I mean, so that's that's the, the problem because we'd never joined the trading block. We signed up for it from day one. Well, what, what also when you what actually go understand. back and dig into it, you know. But what many people don't understand is the EU, as it exists in its current form, warts and all, yeah. never existed until the early 90s, and nobody was given a vote. So well, people say, oh, we voted to join it. No, no it, we did. didn't. It, it existed as a trading block. They just sold yeah. it as a trading block, but it existed in its current form, effectively. They just yeah, sold. They just... sold you a pop, and Edward Heath is completely to blame for it because he was the one. He was a globalist. He wanted us in the EU. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, anyway, let's let's move on from from grain. Well, because, that's actually you know quite a good point because Keith has stood up. Keith has stood up and said, um, "No, no, we're not going back to the EU." You know, we'll 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 not um we'll not do away with any of the sensible laws that protect our food or anything like that. But we're not going back. We're not joining them. Do you know what? Um, that's one of the most sensible things I've heard from Keith so far. It is. Um, well, Keith's on the back foot, isn't he? Because what's Rishi done? What's Rishi done well, that's really well, we put Keith on Pete put Keith on the back foot? And and can I just ask, was that a reasonable reasonable facsimile of Keith's accent for a Scotsman? I suppose so. I suppose so. <laughs> um, did you did you before we answer that question? Did you load the visual? Which yes, I did load the visual. Right. I have the so visual. I, I, I think it's time. I think we go all in on this because we talked about this on yeah. Wednesday, but uh -huh. we didn't really go all in on it. And I think, you know, as the show is called All In, we need to go all in on these conspiracy theories which appeared to be true and we didn't even know were true. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what? So Rishi Sunak gives a press conference saying basically we're cancelling net zero. He, he, he says we're pushing it, but it is we're cancelling it, right? He just didn't yeah. want to say that just yet. But he said we're stopping heavy-handed measures that we didn't know about. So take us through these, John. Well, he says that they're stopping taxis on eating meat. I didn't know they'd done that or were going to do it. I, I wasn't told this. I mean, anyone that suggested that this could happen was called a conspiracy theorist i i thought yep yep um he says yep. we're stopping new taxis to discourage flying i, I wasn't I was, aware that we'd implemented I, I was, them <laughs> no I, I wasn't aware that we were going to be having them and i mean once again anybody that suggested it was was being called crazy um, um they were being told that no I don't know anyone who has seven different bins but apparently we won't have to sort of rubbish into them what what you I mean, when you really, dig, when you really dig into these, how, <laughs> they were really going to put this on us, were they? I don't know. Well, they're well, saying that they're not like going it. to anymore. I didn't realise they were going to make us share cars compulsory. No, uh, this this is once again something that 
that people were called conspiracy theorists and crazy about when they suggested it, but they're saying we're stopping compulsory car sharing. I wasn't aware that no, there was a compulsion to make us share cars. I'm assuming the expense of insulation upgrades was the fact that we're going to force people to insulate their houses to a certain standard. And have a heat pump. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. A new approach to reach net zero. But so if if this is a new approach now, we do we do we, we can that was the original approach. Yes, You're that, telling me that was the original Yeah, according to Rashi, that was the original approach. Yeah. Now it's been fact checked and people say blah blah blah. You know, the government had never done this, but if if the Prime Minister is claiming that he's not gonna do this now, then it was on the cards. Sure unless was, he's was, lying. Unless he's a lying B, right? Well, he is. He is the prime minister. That's very yeah. Very I know, but too. well, I mean, you can fact check it all you like, but he said that. That's what he said, and I think he's You're deleted right. the tweet. By the way, right? I think because I couldn't find the tweet, I had to copy that off someone else's copy. That's not off Rishi well, Sunak's tweet, right? But my, but my question is this. But the thing is, he said that. So either he was going to implement this, or he's lying. Either well, way, he he's a turd. Well, well, yeah, because I, 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 I just can't believe that that people are people are literally being told, regardless of the answer to your question right now, people were literally being told now. Uh -huh. Those were the things that were going to be put on them. Yeah, yeah. And yet they will still, they will still look at the people who <sighs> warned that these things are on the card and say, you're crazy. Yeah, yeah, I know. It, no. it was like me and, it was like me and the treatment passports. I was one of the first. Yeah, I know, to, I know. Say these were coming. I know, but you're crazy. Um, so the, the thing, though, is Keith has said that she's wrong to do this, and he would probably keep going at it, right? So, oh, what's so he, Keith? he would make a share of cars. <laughs> he would make us install heat pumps. He would still go for electric cars, ban on petrol, petrol and diesel cars by twenty thirty. He would fucking still go the whole hog. Is he trying to throw the election? Yes. Yeah, it must be, because obviously nobody wants to govern. Because actually, Rishi now seems to be taking steps that would attract votes rather than lose them. I completely agree with you. And I, I want to say something here, and this is going to sound controversial. And, you know, if this ever gets clipped and shared, I might get attacked for this by a bunch of... a, a small loudmouth minority on X or Twitter, or whatever you want to call it. But I'm going to blow your mind right now, people. The vast majority of people do not support any of this shit. <laughs> they do not support net shit zero. They do not they support any of it. They don't care. What they care about is, is whether or not they can improve their own quality of life for themselves <laughs> and their immediate family. That is what the vast majority of people care about. They don't care about your net zero shit, and they don't want extra taxes. They don't want compulsory car sharing. They don't want you stopping them being able to go on, you know, that little trip to Magaluf. Because, let's face it, the vast majority of people are in the lower classes in this country. The working classes. And, and oh my God, that Sky News interview. Did you see it? Did you see the sky? So Kemi Badenoch is is having an interview, and Ke Kemi's actually in the right here, by the way. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> the the Sky News liberal elite London bubble fucking presenter said poor people don't drive. <laughs> she said poor people don't worry about things like you, Les, because they don't drive and they don't have cars. But this is people that live in London. She thinks people live in. She thinks everybody in the country lives in London. This is fine for yeah. London, right? You don't need a car in London, right? It's like you live in New York. You don't need a car. As soon as you go outside, it you need a car, right? But mm -hmm. I mean, you just hire one. That's fine if you live. I mean, Vaughn and Shalini are perfect examples. You don't need a car. Like you just hire a zip car or whatever. Yeah, you like hire that. a car. You take it on holiday. You come back. You dump it, right? That's fine if you live in London, but not everybody lives in London. 
they, 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 the people that live in London and are well to do yeah. have absolutely no idea what the real world is like, do yeah. they? I know. They I mean, no it's like for us to go from the gym to 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 where Andy stays, right? Okay, it takes about ten minutes in the car, right? You can't get a bus there. You just can't. You could get close to it, right? But by close to it, you'd get within a half hour walk. I just want to make a point. That's here. as close as you can get. So, so along the same vein, right? I am what they would class a working class person. I'm a poor person, okay? Yeah. I'm looking at my bank account right now. There is exactly 47 pence in it. That's no word of a lie. I'll send well, you a hey, I've, here, got, I've got to give you kudos, mate. You're on credit. Yeah, I've got 47 pence in the bank. I drive. Yeah. Because if I didn't drive as a disabled person, I would be confined to my fucking house. But that's what they want. They want you confined to your house. And when I say they, I don't mean an elusive they. I don't mean some sort of super national um, you know, elite that's trying to, to kill everyone. I just mean the government. Because if they yeah. keep you in their house, it's much, it's much easier for them and you're easier to control. I mean, granted, I'm not allowed to drive a manual car. I've um, never been allowed to drive a manual car. Yeah. A bus militant mushroom is a miserable experience that once yeah. done once, you will never wish to repeat, but you may on occasion have to. That, that, that's true. <laughs> Push the button. That's true. There you go. There you go. And if you're enjoying this show so far, boys and girls, and don't forget to leave a like if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel because that's the only way you can get involved in the chat. You have to be subscribed for 20 minutes. And if you want to go even further, you can support us on the likes of Patreon at patreon.com forward slash chasing descent, Kofi, ko fi.com forward slash chasing descent, or right here on YouTube. You can click that little join button and you can subscribe at one of the tiers now. And that helps us out. My new £300 yeah. pound a month energy bill just to keep the lights on, you know, little things towards there's, that, and we really do appreciate it. There's, there's some states in in America where you're allowed to drive at thirteen or fourteen because the place yeah, is right. the place is just so big that you can't get to school <laughs> if you mm. can't drive. I mean, I was allowed to uh, technically uh, drive at sixteen because I was I'm disabled, right? And there there is a. A provision in the law that says people who are disabled are allowed their license at 16 so that they can start I didn't their life. That. Uh, yeah, there's a provision in the law that says disabled people are allowed to drive at 16 years of age, allowed, allowed a full license. Um, but I didn't actually start driving or get a car until the age of 22. Um, so, but I tell you, without it now, if I wasn't able to drive, I would be confined. I wouldn't yeah. be able to go out. Yeah. So, it's as simple as that. Yeah. Um, um, poor, poor people drive. Sky yeah, they news. do. So we drive. So slipping back to Sunak. So with with he's in the mood to cancel things, obviously, because if he's cancelling that zero to a degree, uh -huh. right? And and the figures were quite impressive, because apparently Britain's done something like forty six percent of the way there, and the rest of the world's only eight. <laughs> so he says we can afford to take our foot. Well, actually, what he meant was, what he should have said was, we can afford to put our foot back on the gas because everybody yeah. else is lagging way behind us. Why are we even doing this? We contribute nothing. Hey. But anyway, um, it's, it's a mental Emma's disability, Emma. Um, <laughs> it's, a form of, it, it's a form of MS and all of my muscles and joints have been breaking down year on year. So, I, you know, I, I can't walk long distances. I've got a walking stick. I've got a wheelchair. I've got a mobility oh, scooter. Oh, God, day on day. Don't feel bad for me. Don't feel sorry for me because, you know what, with all of these things, with the car, with the mobility scooter and that, I still have a great time and get out and do what I want. So it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> <You're> okay. <laughs> it's all good. And I've got loads of painkillers. Right, okay. Right, um, so where was it? So Sunak is apparently considering banning cigarettes for the new generation. I'm not quite sure which generation, but for the new generation. Um, what, so basically doing what they're doing in New Zealand? Yeah. Because in New Zealand, yeah. if you are if you were born yeah. after a certain year, you're not allowed to purchase them full stop. Exactly. So, I mean, okay. Do you know what? I, 
It's just little steps. These little steps make big things, you know. From little acorns, big trees grow. It's but I am so torn about this one, right? Because I'm an ex-smoker, as you know. Um, but hold on, hold on, hold on. You're not an ex-smoker until you stop inhaling completely, and that includes well, vapes. Well, my point is. <laughs> Well, You're still a nicotine is, addict. Yeah, that's And true, you've but... still smoked on occasion because I've seen you do it. <laughs> I, I, not for about three months now. But... Oh, three weeks. Three, three weeks. Months. Three when months. I was down. <laughs> I did not touch a cigarette when you were down, actually. <laughs> Don't fucking give me that uh, shit. And the pub? Nope. Mm. Nope. <laughs> I stayed inside because the pub let us use these. <coughs> oh, right, carry on. I don't but, care for cigarettes either. But what? But my point is, right, so I, I would be happy if everybody stopped smoking cigarettes anyway. Um, but I'm also, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a hippy-dippy libertarian, baby, and I say the government has absolutely no right to tell you what you can or can't put in your own goddamn body, and that includes other things too that I won't say. Yeah, you, you know what? You can say that all you like, but you know who gives them the power to do it? We do. That's this true. is the thing. We give them the power. These people are meant to be your employees. People seem to forget this. They've forgotten their place, and it is their place. They're supposed to represent you, not take partial ownership of your body. Yeah. And I'm telling you, when people are telling you what you can and cannot put in your own body, you do not own your own body. <laughs> You you need to listen to my um, I'm going to come on on Sunday and do my te technocracy chat. You need to listen to it because it will explain all this and where we're going and what's going to happen. Well, you see people, right? So in fact, I'll tell you what. I'll give you the date on Sunday of when the one world government will come about. Oh wow! I'll give you the but actual on, date on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it. Uh -huh. The last couple of weeks, the likes of uh, Lawrence Fox and, and Neil Oliver uh, are saying, ooh, we should have a revolution. They go, ooh, revolution? We should have a revolution. Imagine Neil Oliver leading a bloody revolution. <laughs> L'Oreal, because I'm worth it. <laughs> Look, I've got to the gates and I've hit the monologue. You know, I, I just want to tell you. I, I, I'm actually, I'm going to refer back to something that you said to me off air, Ben, right? Okay. This evening. And, and I think you're right. I think you are right. Because there comes a point in a man's life when he has to look like a man. Right? Yeah. And Neil Oliver still has to reach that point. But you have, you have transformed into a young Adonis. I know. So, I, I know. I and, applaud and you. Know you. What? I applaud. I you think. I think you look way better for it. Going with the boy band bangs was, I think, of the right the right move. Um, yeah. Okay. It was. Well, look, look, especially at this angle. Oh yeah. But what's anyhow, um, what's Shirley, oh, this Shirley's still talking about. How do I know? Well, you'll find out on Sunday, darling. You'll find out anyhow, on Sunday. Going back to my point. How can we have a revolution of any kind when people don't even know how the world works? They, have, they don't even know the basics of how the world works, and nor do they care, to be honest. Most people, like I said, like I said earlier, they just want to get on and improve the quality of life for themselves and for their loved ones. And, and you know what? If they can pay the bills and go on one or two holidays a year, most people are content. Mm -hmm. right? Most people are content, and they will remain content. I'm not content. I'm not content with that. I will only be content when the entire system, not just whether or not the, the, the Tories or Labour or Lib Dems are in charge, the entire system is changed for the better and the benefit of everybody else. Right, okay. I, I hear what you're saying, okay, and, and I applaud I applaud your um your thought process and your, your wishes. But 
The other thing, are, are, and, and maybe we're going a bit deep here, but it is Friday night after all where we're allowed to yeah. do that, right? So, do you think that contentment is overrated? Uh, I, 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 I think contentment is boring. Well, exactly. So I think, do you maybe think if, um, if there is a reason for life, right? Uh -huh. Do you think then that it's here as a challenge, and therefore, if you ever find yourself in a situation where you are content, then you failed at that challenge. Well, maybe, but do you know what? And um, this is going to sound insulting, and I apologise in advance. But most people are happy with boring. Most people are they're, they're zombies. They're zombies. They have I, because they have no, been I, brainwashed. I'll say it. I'll say it. Most people don't have the intelligence to understand that they shouldn't be content. <laughs> Do you know what? It, it's I'll, I'll give you a prime true. example when it comes to myself. Okay, I am looking always for an adrenaline rush. Yeah, and you know this. Yeah, and I am. I I I, I like. I like being on the edge of what, what one would term life and death. I enjoy it. I think it's a rush. Most people don't. Most people don't look for that high. They don't look for that rush. And I'm not going to get it from, you know, narcotics or anything uh, like that. I, I don't know. I don't know. I think, I think a lot of, well, I think a lot of men do. You'd be surprised. <laughs> you would be surprised. Um, because most people have grown up in a society that has brainwashed them to tell them that, you know, uh, life is, it's basically they live. The media, everything around them, the school system, what they've grown up through has been designed to tell them that working that nine to five and having that 2.4 children, paying those bills and then dying is, is contempt, is happiness. And it's yeah. not. I've never seen... I mean, having the... Never Having found wife and children. Never, never been content. Never found it. And probably Having... never will. Having wife and children, to me, is the best thing in the world, first of all. But I want more. I want the more worst. for them. The worst. <laughs> well, always, of course. Right? But I want more for them. I want more for... Even by, by, by means of money or anything like that. I just want them to... To, to broaden their horizons, see more, do more, consume more real-world experiences. And I am not content with just a 9 to 5. I mean, I couldn't work a 9 to 5 anyway, but I am not content. <laughs> and I am glad that I am not content. But sometimes you need rocked out your contentment. <clears throat> and I don't mean you, I mean people. Sometimes they need yeah. rocked out their contentment. Right, anyway, let's let's move on. Um where are we? The Scottish government is is kind of polling the population just now um to find out if the the Scottish government want to increase the minimum unit price on alcohol again. Again. Again, they want to put up 65p per unit, right? So, and they want to know if the if the people would agree to that. And the thing is, why? Why? It doesn't work. Well, it doesn't work because deaths by alcohol work. have gone up 2% over the last year. So why do you want to increase it? Because it doesn't fucking work. It's well known that it doesn't work. It's been discredited in many, many countries. It's a complete joke. Put in, tell you spend why. the money on putting people into rehab and looking after people that abuse themselves. That's where you save lives. Not putting up the minimum unit price on alcohol. Doesn't they're work. The minimum, they're not putting up the minimum unit price on alcohol to save lives. They want to do it for more taxation. Yeah, I know they do. More, I know more they income. Do. I know. That's all it's all about. I know, it's, but it's I'm trying a... to make a reasonable argument here. And I think my argument yeah, was I... reasonable. I think your argument's extremely reasonable, but if they are going to do that, take that extra money and do exactly what you said. But they won't. No, they won't. Of course they won't, because they don't actually care about saving lives. Like you said, if they if they did, when they see that, that the deaths have gone up 2%, they would look and, and think, well, maybe this isn't working. It's time to try something new. But that extra money they've been getting in from all those uh, oh, yeah. extra... Oh, it's tasty, isn't it? It's tasty. Yeah. 
Yes, yeah, yeah. I'm saving up for a second camper van. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, without it, the windows might not have gone in the ferries and Nicola might not have a camper van. <laughs> oh. Hey, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently Sweden are out on a climate protest. Uh, apparently it's a global climate protest. I haven't seen much globally, but Sweden do look as if they're out in protest and they're saying that we want the government to take more extreme measures on climate. Now, I think Sweden maybe comes to the attention of people because that is the home of the little climate the war for self. Is she there? Is she is she there? I'm sure. Well, I, I haven't seen her, but I'm assuming she is. But I mean, Greta's really served her purpose now. She's no use anymore. She's been used and oh, discarded like a like a you know like a worn out toy. Hmm? And I, I, well, I mean, not, that's effectively what what's happened to her. She's not child anymore. No, she's not. And that that that. That is a problem. I mean, it's not a problem for <laughs> me or you or anyone else, but it's a problem for the people that wanted to hold her up as some kind of yeah. you know, paragon of virtue. They say, look at this child doing this. She's not a child anymore. They need a new model. And believe me when I tell you, they will find one. Yeah, yeah they will. I, 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 actually, I actually felt quite gratified for Greta when she was in Glasgow at COP26. She was singing, you can shove your climate crisis up your arm. And I don't, think, I don't think she quite knew what was going on, but she obviously fell in with an anti-climate crowd. <laughs> was having a great time. <laughs> which, is, Come on. Which, which is quite gratifying, I thought. Yeah, because, let's face it, she's a young girl. She should be having a good time, you know? She shouldn't have been. She shouldn't have been manipulated by her parents and who are. And she did have a Rothschild handler. She did. I mean, that's a fact. That's not a conspiracy theorist. Um, so yeah, I mean, she shouldn't have been manipulated like that. She should have had a normal childhood. And you know, effectively, she has achieved nothing, which is a shame for her. But she's achieved nothing because nothing's yeah. changed. No, really, no, in real terms, changed. nothing's changed. No, 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 nothing's changed. And and you know what? Um, this net zero thing really is a non-start if you want to have any kind of quality of life, people. If you want it's to have not, any kind of quality of life, it's, it's a non-starter. And it's worse than that. It is much, much worse than that. You can't achieve net zero without killing people. You just can't well, do it. In fact, that's what, what's his name, Kerry? Pardon me, Kerry stood up in front of Congress and said that. Hmm. Because he said agriculture is the biggest offender and, a with, and we need to get on top of agriculture if we want to get to net zero. Well, if you get on top of agriculture, what the hell are you going to eat? What are you going to eat? Exactly. Um, unfortunately, I, I go to Mr. Jungle Griffin in the chat who says these people are turkeys voting for Christmas. And yes, yes, yeah. they are. They know, but, you know, forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. But they, they're, they're brainwashed. They're, they're just so full ideas. They're so brainwashed. They are brainwashed, It's like NAFO, yeah. isn't it? It's like NAFO. Yeah. NAFO are, are, are the biggest useful idiots going. Oh, yeah, they yeah. They really I mean, are. <laughs> this guy's done a clue. Speaking of That's so I, dense. I, I mean, mean, going back to... <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Sorry. It's like, it's, it's like, I mean, even look at the people that comment on our YouTube videos, right? Hmm. Who aren't NAFO, right? But this is how thick people are, right? So you put oh, up, here we go. I mean, you've seen the short, you might not, but you, there's a short about Freddie Mercury singing, We Are The Champions. And right. as written and as first performed, it just ends with, We Are The Champions, right? Yeah. And... And what's his name? AJ said that this was a Mandela effect because people think that Freddie sung or Queen sang We Are The Champions of the World. But they did. In 1985, they sang it to Live Aid and effectively after that, every time it was sung, it ended with Of The World. So it's yeah. not a Mandela effect. No. It's just... You know, people heard that and assumed that's what the song is. Yeah, okay, the original didn't have it in it, but big deal. 
it's it's a complete non-starter for a Mandela effect, and he should never mm. have included that. And if he'd done his research properly, he wouldn't have. No, and I pointed it out. I pointed it out, and some of some of the responses are so on the retard <laughs> that it's unbelievable. I didn't. Uh, you know, I've you know I've just wasted one minute of my life. <laughs> Well, so my reply, of course, is, well, it was actually only 40 seconds, but <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> you're very welcome, and you are very, very welcome. Um, but we are the champions of the world, mm -hmm. and we, we do champion the world. Yeah. And I would like to, to speak about Poland once again Ooh, okay. this evening. But I want to go back, because I'm, I'm just going to have a little refresher myself. But I sent you some videos earlier, didn't I, John? Oh, yes, you did. Yes, you did. Uh, uh, gav, yeah. gav, 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 gav. And, and apparently in Polish it appears that gav sounds like die, 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 die. <laughs> so basically, there's a viral video trend going on in Poland, mostly on TikTok by the looks of it, where Polish people are imposing Zelensky into their videos yeah. uh, and we've just give, 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 give and then they're turning around and trying to bash him and trying to push him out of uh, shows up to beg for him and they're, they're going, no, go away, go away. This is a trend now. Yeah. Poland really don't like Ukraine, do they? No, they're and they don't like Ukrainians them. because apparently all these young men are doing nothing but hanging around and shagging all their birds. Yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Shit happens. Shit happens when you let all the I mean, it, it, young it, fighting age it, men into your country. Well, well, you know what? I, I, I can neither condemn nor condone such actions. Well, you, uh, you yeah. can. You can do what you like, mate. I, I condone them. Uh, no, I condemn them. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. As long as, every, <laughs> as long as everything is consensual. Yeah, well, whatever. As Russell Brand claims. I think we need to talk about what the British government are doing. Yeah. I think we, do. I think we need to have a little chat well, about... Well, right. So, first of all, people that say it's not the British government, it's a parliamentary committee, that's the British government as far as I'm concerned. It is, and it's it's got Houses of Parliament headed paper. It's the it, British government. It, yeah, British that's government. the British government. That's that. It's nobody else. So... Uh, is there a Caroline Dynage? Dynage, yeah. Her name is. Um, well, she is uh, the head of the Culture Committee, and she has been sending emails and letters to social media companies, asking them to either and media companies and media companies or eradicate and demonetize Russell Brand. Um, I wasn't aware that he had been tried, convicted, and found guilty of anything in a court of law, first of all. And yeah, second of all, second of all, even if he had, does that mean the government has the right to stop him making any money? I don't believe so. What? I, I is, think it's massive it, overreach. I, well, I, I actually and, think and, it's good. In fact, I have to question the fact, are we actually living in China? This is... It's it's fascism. And I don't use it's, that word lightly. It's yeah, it is fascism. This is this is what fascism actually is. Yeah, it's the it, it it's it's the state and big enterprise, big business conspiring and coming together and acting as one. Mm -hmm. And this is fascism. I mean, that's a very diluted and very simplistic. Yeah. description of what it is but what it's not is uh asking for free speech what it's not is uh is is what most people would say is fascism is not fascism but this this is the textbook fucking definition of fascism what is going on here and it is scary mm -hmm. it is it, it is scary because if she the online harms bill has just passed and it it almost seems like they're going to use that to do more of this. Yeah, and but it's terrifying. It's it's crazy, yeah. I mean, it's crazy, and 
it's it's a massive overreach of government. It's just a, it's, it's the nanny state, and again, I'll bring this up on Sunday. I will explain why this is happening and what we can do or not do about it. I mean, I think that that she has to resign. I don't think the fascists are the rich, to be fair. I think the fascists no. are the people that are in political power. I think that's who the fascists are. And and while they are almost certainly rich, it's not just the rich that um, that are fascists, because sometimes the rich are are victims of these people. And and I think there's a good chance that Elon Musk will fall foil of them at some point. Right. You know? So I want to give you some, I want to give you some facts. Right. I want to give you some facts here. Mm -hmm. And up until this. British government intervention. I was on the fence as to whether or not this was an establishment attack against Russell Brand. Not any right? longer. <laughs> but it goes deeper because Dinage's husband uh -huh. is one of the leaders of the 77th Brigade. Yeah. One of the founders, Dinage I believe, actually. One yep. of the founders two of the 77th months, Brigade. Two months ago, I believe, Glastonbury. Dynage had a nice two and a half thousand pound trip to Glastonbury, yeah. hosted by and paid for by Google. Yeah. Um. Are you, are you telling me there isn't conflict of interest here when Google demonetized Russell Brand? Of course there isn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think that that woman. <laughs> The thing has is, to resign. people people say, see when people say this, Google demonetized Russell Brand to protect people, and and I got to bring this up again, and people don't seem to understand. How does it protect, does yeah, it protect anyone? First because of all? they haven't taken his content down, right? His content's still there. You can still search for it. You can still watch it. You can still yes. view it, and you still see adverts. But the ad revenue goes straight to YouTube now, and not. Not to Russell Brand. If you go to the second channel, if you go to the Real Review, they run ads on our videos. They run ads on my videos. They am run I ads on the... Am I fuck? They run ads on our videos and they don't pay us money. These video, mm. This video you see just now that has ads on it, we don't get the revenue because this, this will be classified as not suitable for the majority of advertisers. For, for about three days, and then they'll say yeah, it's fine. And then they'll turn it green once we review it. So we get all our views in the first three days. So they get all the money, and then they turn it green. So it's just a scam. That's why yeah, we they, rely. They, that's why we've always asked for donations, and that's why we rely on donations. It's not this. We're not trying to graft. Well, we are. But, well, no, we're not grafting. We're just trying to make money because this is our job, effectively. So yeah, but we're up front about it. We don't I mean, get don't... ad revenue. I mean, we've been we've been monetized since what May. Yeah, and and our ad revenue is probably less than thirty quid. Yeah, it, uh, in total, because some way, of the thing, the ad revenue portion, because some of the people on here have donated money mm -hmm. on YouTube, um, and and we, we get seventy. We get seventy percent of that, right? Yeah, we do. If you donate money on Kofi, we get ninety four percent of that. Yeah, about that. Yeah, same yeah. on Patreon. Yeah. Okay, so if you do it on Kofi, we get ninety four percent. If you do it on YouTube, we get seventy percent. Right? Yeah. But the ad revenue that we've had since May is about 30 quid. Yeah. Which, to be fair, is substantially more than we've earned on Rumble. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, uh, in Rumble, when, you know, I, I've championed Rumble since day one. John will tell you that. I, I have championed that platform. I think that platform is going to. If it if it capitalizes now, right now, it is going to become a a but willing it, contender. Yeah, but it, it it doesn't pay out on the same scale. It says it pays more than YouTube, but it doesn't. It fucking doesn't. It doesn't because we get way it more doesn't. views on Rumble and some view, and we don't get any revenue on the stuff. Don't get anything. No, and it's all monetized. It's all monetized, and it's, it's all it, monetized. We get, we, get, we get bugger all. Yeah, so, well, yeah, so you, I mean, Rumble's not the panacea that it purports to be. We don't make enough money 
Okay, people can call us grifters all they like. We don't make enough money to even, you know, go out for a nice slap up meal once a month. No, we we're not we, making we, we rely of pounds. On, we're not. We rely on people like Spencer and Cellini and Ed and <laughs> yeah to take us out <laughs> to take sometimes. us out. Yeah, because we're, yeah. we're skin. I mean, people, you know, once a few, you know, a couple of years back, one of the people that was constantly trolling and targeting me tried saying I was making thousands of pounds a month, and I was just chortling. I was just, ho, ho, ho. I, I fucking wish. wish. Yeah, I wish. I wish. And but I no. think, the, um, I think the gym's in trouble again. Or it really is. It's not going well at all. This move. The people. People have lost confidence, right? I think that's the problem. People have lost confidence and they won't come out. Whoop. Do you know what? Yeah. We want you. We we want you to come come to us. Come come to us, right? We want to do more things like in person stuff, but we're not gonna do a together declaration and charge you like fucking fifty quid to come and see us. We're not gonna do that. Right? But, I... but you know, I, I, right, see that? See, I mean, let's talk about this thing that they had in Copenhagen, right? So they go, they oh go on God. a jolly to Copenhagen, right? One hundred and fifty-four pound a ticket. Yeah, but they go on a jolly, right? So they'll not be paying for that out of their own pocket. They'll be taking that out of the proceeds of this. Yeah, of course, because you know, let's face it, John Bo says he's got eleven quid in his bank account, which, by the way, John is significantly more than I've got. Yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. right. So they go to Copenhagen. They they'll get their tran They'll get their they'll get their travelling paid. They'll get their room paid, and they'll get their food and drink paid. Right. And then they'll take a nice fee out of that as well. And then they'll take a fee. What? Yeah. What's the ticket for? What well, other than paying for them to 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 be you know to live? What are you paying to receive? Uh, you you sit in a room and hear some people talk to you and say things that will never come to pass. And I I I'm sorry if that that upsets some people, but these people aren't heroes. There are no heroes. There are no. There heroes. aren't. There are no saviors. Uh, no, nobody's coming to rescue you from anything. Nobody's coming to save you from anything. Trump's not going to get you out of this, that, or the other. Um, Biden's not going to do the same. Yep. Um, Doctor Doc, Doctor <laughs> McCullough or whatever is not going to. These people, okay, they they. I mean, what's his I'm name? Also, that the 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 nurse guy, John. John Campbell. John Campbell's not going to save you. All he does right, is right. is write things on bits of paper and tell you what you want to hear, which is fine. And if it's right, it's fine. And and I'm not knocking him for doing what he's doing because, you know, if no. he's right, he's informing you and he's keeping you up to date, which is fine, right? Yeah. But he's not going to save you from anything. And and we're not going to save you from anything because that's all we do. All we're trying to do is inform you of what, what's happening and what's happening in the world and... And maybe where you want to think, and, and all we're encouraging you to do is think for yourself and make up think your own fair. choices. You know, I, I I'm not going to tell anybody what to do, what to think, what to no. believe. And if if people want to tell me I'm wrong, uh, many people do. I'm quite happy. I'm quite happy for that. You know, but um, but I, I I couldn't stand up in an event and tell people that. You know, I, I couldn't. I mean. Uh, I mean, I can stand up and I can talk shit for every for anything, but if, if we, I if couldn't we didn't tell people on. the way that things are going to be. You know, to give them false hope, I just can't do no. that. Can't do if that. We do, if we were to do an event, it would basically be me and you sitting on a stage doing exactly this, mm. and it would be you know, and we'd have a laugh with the audience, and we would talk to the audience, and we get the audience involved. Yeah, and that would be that would be it. Would just be an extended and more interactive version of this, and it would be at cost if possible. So it'd yeah. be as cheaply as possible. Because and, and when we do, you know, meetups and stuff, we're not charging people to come and see us. We had a fucking grand old jolly in Brighton and stuff. We and did. I want to. I, I want to do more of that. And <laughs> nobody is inclined or forced to pay for any of that. You no. know, come and see us because let's face it, we we. You're right, Tony. We You're are right. a social. We're a social species. <laughs> we're a social species, and doing social things is great. Yeah. And I can't. I do. I, I must admit, I am out of my comfort zone when I'm around 
a bunch of people. But I I I see that people are having a great time and I'm having a great time and you know my yeah. great time might be something different to yours as in Brighton. But you know you guys put up with what I want to do and I put up with what you want to do and everybody have fun. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, Mr. Jungle Griffin, if you can come along on Sunday, I think it would be really good because I, I, I've got stuff that would, it, it will not help. It will explain, but it won't help. <laughs> okay, what else have you got for us? Oh, I've got lunch, mate. I will be here for days. <laughs> the, right. the, cut -off point, the cut off point is in about 25 minutes. All right, okay. Uh, Fetterman's dress code is causing a meltdown in the Senate. <laughs> oh my god. Do you know what? I've seen some stuff today. Mm -hmm. I've seen some stuff today, and people are saying Fetterman is actually Ashton Kutcher in a mask. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's the same man. His head is identical. It's exactly the same shape. He's put on, he's got better, and he's put on weight. I mean, I come on. Can you not see that? His head is the exact same shape. He's even got that flat bit, you know? I mean, he's bald, Look. so you can see it. He's got this flat bit in his skull, and it's exactly the same in all the pictures, right? Look, He's not in a mask. Peters, people like Stu Peters, uh, I don't know if it's... Oh, God. Me, but it, you know, people are convinced it is Ashton Kutcher. They're like, this is Ashton Kutcher. No, it's not. Uh, Why do people uh, do this? What, what are they trying... I don't understand what they're trying to achieve. I mean, it's like, do they really, they, they want, they want it to be true. I think they really do. It's like, it's like dumbs and green frogs and, you know, all this kind of shit. They want it to be true because it's something that they don't have control of that's going to help them without them having yeah. to lift a fucking finger and do anything themselves. That's the problem. People don't want to do anything themselves. They want Prince Charming to ride in on a horse and fuck them royally up the arse without even the common decency of a reach around. Well, that's demonetized <laughs> right there, ladies and <laughs> <Maybe> gentlemen. Maybe not. <laughs> right there. There you go. And, and, and the, the, the 0 0.001 0 .0 pence, and that is, by the way, a true number. That, <laughs> that is a true number. Like, you know what? Like, let's not worry about being demonetized, because <laughs> what the hell? We don't get money moneyed anyway, so, yeah. <laughs> 5,000 people watching live, then I worry about being demonetized. Yeah, yeah. Then, then yeah. I worry about being yeah. demonetized. Yeah, but when um, we've got 19 or 20 or whatever, you know, I mean, it's great to have 19 or 20, because we, we used to fucking do these shows and talk to ourselves. Yeah, we did. And you know what? They weren't as good as they are now. No, they weren't. <laughs> no. But no, yeah. They weren't. Right, anyway, move us away from Fetterman. Keep going. Fire some shit. Okay, right. So, a group called the Canine Beings. Oh! <laughs> what? What? Baby? Whoop, what? Whoop, what? <laughs> so a group called the Canine Beings set up some kind of occupation in Germany and some kind of station or something, right? Yeah, now, some it, day they do it every year. Huh? Yeah. So, so it's been kind of misreported and reported, and so these people are basically gay fetishists. Right. What well, are they? Right. No, no, no. No, no, they no, no, are. No. Apparently, the group canine beings who organize this and who do it every year are gay. And okay. their fetish is uh, are they, what they call it pop play. Right. So their fetish is they like to dress up as dogs. So they're gay and? people that dress up as dogs and indulge in pop play. Whatever that and? may be. But so it was reported as people who were identifying as dogs. But that's not. not what they they know they're not dogs. <laughs> you know, they they just like to pretend that it's cosplay for adults. That's all it is. I mean, let's face it, cosplay is now cosplay for adults. Kids don't do that shit no more. It's all adults. Yeah, but I know, but I mean and cos well, to be fair, cosplay's always been adults, but you know, yeah. But um, it's like, that that's all it is, it's cosplay. Except they're gay and they like to pretend they're dogs. It's a bit like furries. Oh, right, but I, I, so they do their little occupation and then they go home, right? They, yeah. they do it every year, once a year. Yeah. 
I have seen so much outrage. And I, don't, look, I, I understand people might think it's weird and fucked up. And I, you know what? I'm, I'm on board. It's not something that I would be doing. What's going on with your audio? I don't know. I think you're either too far away. Have you got a fan on? Yeah, should I turn that off? Cause that no, no, that. you don't need to turn the fan off, but you need to have your face close to the mic when you start e I'll, I'll do this. raising your voice. Okay, right. But I, I've always said that if people, as long as they're not doing anybody else any harm, you know, you want to be a rainbow unicorn. Yeah. Who be your it. boots? Who your mm -hmm. boots? Yeah. Um, and I, okay, people, people might, this might be an unpopular opinion with our audience, but I simply don't care. And... It's, it's like, why do we have to be perpetually outraged about anything or anything? <laughs> you know I, what? I just don't it's understand like, it. It's like, these people have probably been doing this for years, right? Yeah. And it's only because it's been brought to people's attention now that people suddenly jump on a bandwagon and go, well, they shouldn't be doing that. It's not suitable for kids and all that. Well, you know what? Huh. All they were doing was basically sitting down. They weren't yeah, as long as parading not around. Doing any, well, as long as they're not doing anything overtly sexual in front of children. No, they were I doing nothing. Care. They were doing nothing. Uh, well, the, 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 Okay, what's what's the issue? Okay, because they're dressed as dogs, and it's just the the, the media's misreporting it as people who identify as dogs. It's like I think they're trying to say that people are getting sick, you know, in the head, right? I think that's what the media are trying to say that people are getting sick in the head, and they're trying to make something out of nothing. Now, these people might be sick in the head; they might not. I don't care. They're not harming okay. anyone. That's the thing. They're not harming anyone. It's like the Hobby Horse Championships in Finland. Remember that? <laughs> they're not harming anyone, are they? Really? No. no. So just like no. that. I mean, they'll, they'll grow out of it. You know, they will grow out of it. Oh, that, 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 that famous last word right there. I bet they bloody don't. I bet they do. <laughs> <laughs> As long as they are not doing anything sort of, you know, sexual overtly in front of children, um, or or wearing clothes that are risque, shall we say, you know. Yeah, what, unlike the I, guy, I, unlike the. I, I just I, don't know. I, did you see the guy in Italy who was doing something overtly sexual? Uh, which one? Right. And it's a real shame that I have to say that, but. So this guy was standing in the street. People right. were walking past him, and he's basically having a ham shank, right? Right. I would say he's not a natural-born Italian, okay? Okay. Right? And okay. he's standing there for some considerable time, chugging away, right? Mm-hmm, just, just, just working that thing, yeah. Yeah, and then he didn't get the ending that he expected. I hope it was... Uh... He got drop-kicked from behind by two, obviously, Italian gentlemen who took um, offence to I, what he was doing. I'm, once again, on this channel, we can neither condone or condemn violence, but I can condemn his actions. Yeah, I, I do condemn, condemn his, his actions. actions. That's not the kind of thing to be done in decent society. Well, it's not to be done in public. You well, know? not in public, if, if, yeah. If you are that desperate, you at least go and, you know, go and find some tuber called a public toilet or something. God, I'm joking, by the way. <laughs> do it in your home. <laughs> do it in your home. That's the best joke Adam's ever come out with. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a classic Adam, thank you. That is fantastic. <laughs> oh, you need to read the chat, people. Can I say that? Well, yeah, I think I could, yeah, yeah. because Adam, Adam changed, said, changed. never changed beat a word. bishop near the Vatican. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. He's back on form. He is. Maybe our meeting with him this afternoon, this morning, morning has reinvigorated his creative juices. 
Possibly, possibly. I hope so, because he's got a lot of work to oh, do. Have yeah, well, let, let me paint you a little bit of a story here. So you're a highly trained pilot of the United States Air Force, okay? Yeah. Or Marine Corps, I'm not sure which one it was, but anyway. So you're a highly trained pilot, you've gone through rigorous years of training, okay? They've spent a fortune on you, okay? And you are now flying their top-line fighter jet, okay? Right. And you're flying along in South Carolina, and you go, ooh, weather's looking a bit bad up there. I think I'm going to eject. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with the plane. I'm just, I'm just, I'm out of here. I, I, can't I'm out. Take, I can't take weather like that. I blame climate change. <laughs> That's the official explanation. That's the official explanation from the United States military. So I'm guessing a dishonourable discharge oh on the card here. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Did you know? I, I don't know if people here know, but they actually grounded a bit bad. <laughs> <laughs> they grounded all of their planes in case uh, there was some kind of bug in the system, like Russia would take, would be able to take over them remotely or something. Can you imagine um, a debrief. So, um, so, uh, Colonel, <laughs> so Colonel McPhee, what was the problem? Well, I was uh, flying along as I normally would, and I took a ninety-degree left bank into what looked like a pretty bad storm cloud. <laughs> And I thought, I'm out of here, I can't handle this, I wasn't yeah. trained for this, I'm not paid to take this kind of weather. <laughs> Boom. They found the plane, by the way, yeah, or, or yeah. bits of it. They, well, they found it. Bits of it, yeah. <laughs> but my, 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 my question is this, is this the worst cover story you've ever heard, or...? <laughs> it's possibly no, Andrew. Enlighten me, mate. What was in the nine 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 call? I, I haven't seen that one. <sighs> Who made a nine one one call? Andrew says, "Did you hear the nine one one call the pilot made from no. someone's house?" No, I haven't heard. I that. do want to hear. I, I do. You got that. a link or something? Yeah, bring it in and we'll put it up. Because <laughs> that sounds fantastic. <laughs> Here, I want to talk to you about something. So I, I, me and the wife have been watching, right? We 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 stumbled across. A, no, a, a YouTube I turn my camera off every night. <laughs> That's what he thinks. <laughs> but we've been watching a YouTube channel called Skeeter Gene, right? Okay. And we've been watching him quite a bit, and he calls himself Skeet Hansen, and he does the to catch a predator thing. And uh, I'm right. not going to lie, he does it very well, and, okay. and he's 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 very funny as well. He, okay. he puts a lot of comedy into it. But my question is this: in the end, me. with these well, online predator catchers, because there are a lot of them now, they're popping up uh, a dime a dozen. Essentially. Yeah. Is anybody actually going to end up prosecuted? Because it does seem like entrapment. Right. It depends where you are. You can't do this in the UK. People are doing this in the UK. You can't do this in the UK because that is entrapment. Mm. So you can't mm. you you can't do it in the UK, right? Um, yeah. We did a sting operation on illegal taxi drivers one night. You can do it as a police, though. No, no, you can't. You can't entrap, right? Okay. So what you, all you can do is you can, so what we, we were trying to catch illegal taxis, right? Because the illegal taxis are uninsured. So if you, yeah. if you're in a taxi and you have a crash, you're never getting paid out, right? Um, you know, as a victim. So the thing was, what we would do is we would go to a pub and have a drink <laughs> on duty. <laughs> right. On so the we, police's dime, I imagine, as well. Yeah, of course. So yeah, we would go to the yeah, pub and have a drink, place. right? And then we would phone a taxi from the pub. That the right. pub would... We would go to the barman and go, can we get a cab? And the barman would go, yeah, phone that. So we'd phone the cab and we'd say, can we get a cab around to Blutch and such? And we'd get in a taxi, okay? 
and we'd go, we're going such and such, and the taxi would take two or three corners, and then it'd get pulled over by the traffic, and they would go through the taxi and examine it and find out if it was legal or not. One so we busted about, in one night, we busted about six or seven taxis, okay? And I was half cut by the end of the night. I was going to say, I'll tell you by the end of the night. <laughs> well, we only had half, a half pint in each of the pubs, but, you know, I was half cut, so I was okay. But I wasn't driving anyway, so it didn't matter, I was in the taxi. <laughs> right. No, but like, like I say, you but think... But that's, that's not entrapment, because you're not coercing someone to, to do something, right? Mm. Whereas if you go and try, if you go and try to catch someone online... You, you've got to be, you'd have to be very, in the UK, I don't think you could get away with it because one, you're, you, while you're pretending you're a, a youth of some kind or another, okay, yeah. you've got to be very careful what you say because if you, yeah, if you get them to say anything in response to stuff that you've said, then it's that's entrapment. entrapment. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and you're you know done. what? You, you, well, uh, they're not done. You might be. So when when they initiate these conversations as well, and this is something that I find a little bit. Mm -hmm. So when they initiate these conversations, they they wait for the 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 man to yeah. initiate the conversation, but they're talking to a profile that has eighteen on it, specifically yeah. has yeah. eighteen written on it when they when they go and start talking to. So them. they say they're eighteen. So the profile says it's 18, and then a bit of the way into the conversation, they'll say, I'm 13, by the way, is that okay? After they've already started the conversation. Yeah, no, that's and, not okay. That, in the UK, that's not okay. That's and, and, and I, 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 I just wonder, though, in, in many of these cases, are these people who, by the way, are saying and doing some pretty fucked up things oh, to yeah, people uh, they yeah. know are kids? Yeah. Are they actually going to end up in any kind of trouble? And I personally don't think because when you see the mate in America, the mate in America, no, I, because, well, many uh, of them aren't. A lot, a lot. It depends on what state you're in as well, because entrapment is legal in some states, right? But it's not in the UK. No, but you know what? I I, I would encourage people to go and watch uh, Skeeter Gene. I think he's I think he's really good at what he does. He's calm, he's collected, but he's also very funny. Mm -hmm. um, and he he's, he calls himself professional Chris Hansen impersonator, and he does it very well. I don't but, know who Chris Hansen is. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. Why, why don't you take a seat right over here? Never seen it. Well, many the, people will know who Chris. Yeah. Is. Okay. Right. Um. Right. Come on. Take us. Take us. <laughs> right. Have you? Have you? Do you follow Peter Hitchens at all? Sometimes. Have you followed the? Have you followed the I'm jumping on the Russell Brand bandwagon, Peter Hitchens? No. Oh, you should have. No. When, well, he did it to me too. He, thre he threatened to kiss me on air when we were both being interviewed by the BBC. <laughs> Do you not remember that? <laughs> Russell Brand says, I've come over there, Peter, and I'll rock your world. I'm going to give you a kiss right on the lips. <laughs> <laughs> Any slightly feminine way that he has about him, yeah. <laughs> Russell Brand, the comedian. Yeah. Russell Brand, yeah. Russell Brand, the guy that's getting accused of many things just now. So Peter Hitchens has said he threatened to sexually assault me. <laughs> By kissing me on the lips. <laughs> I'm going to rock your world, Peter. I'm going to come over there and kiss you on the lips. <laughs> <laughs> Have you not seen this? Wait, so Russ, so he's he's fucking lost the plot because he's saying this is not trial by media. Hitchens is I mean, saying this is not trial by media. Of course it, it, it fucking it, is. It absolutely is. How can it be anything yeah. other than trial by media? The man's meant to be presumed innocent until proven guilty. Nobody's uh, made a fucking proper complaint yet, or if they have, nobody's told us, right? No. So it is trial by media. So you Hitchens, Hitchens has jumped the shark. Uh, and t tomorrow night... Um... With Danielle Bennett, mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about what the media and particularly Charlotte Wace, one of the journalists here, do. Yeah, and, yeah. 
um, the the woman I'm interviewing, Danielle, has taken Charlotte Waste to court. Yeah. Um, and won because right. Charlotte okay. made. Well, and the, don't, don't, don't give yeah. everyone away. Well, you'll talk about it tomorrow night. So there you we'll go. Fucking tomorrow. Peter Hitchens has jumped the shark. The guy's a fucking loony. He's lost it. I mean, I used to think he was all. He was. He was. He's not as funny as his brother was, right? Nah, Chris, he's not as Chris bright. Knows. He's not as bright, and he's not as sharp, and he's not as quick as his brother was, right? But no. you know, he was. I always thought he was okay, but now he's just lost it. How can you come down that this is not trial by media on Russell Brand because it is? Well, all I would say is, if there are <laughs> any genuine victims of Russell Brand, um, I am not going to denigrate you. Or, or um, what I would, but what I would say is this: if he has done these egregious things, now is the time to report it to the police. And yeah, let them but this with... isn't the point. At this point in time, right? The point. At this point in time. The media is trialing Russell Brand. The government is yes. trialing Russell Brand. Yes. The public are trialing Russell Brand. But the courts haven't even been informed. That's the no. point, right? So yes. if you're in a society that's supposed to take the rule of law seriously, that's supposed to do things through due process and through the justice system, then what the fuck are we doing? Well, like I said on Twitter just yesterday... I, I, I would like to uh, I would like to point out that the singer Cardi B uh, yeah. has admitted, and this was several years ago. And these are federal admitted, crimes. She admitted to drugging and robbing yeah. men, plural, yep. um, when she was not famous. Meaning that surely YouTube, you should demonetize Cardi B. Oh, and, but it was and, okay. She was a struggling black woman who was trying I to mean, make her way in the world. But she's admitted to federal crimes that mm -hmm. harmed others and doing things that, you know... Oh, it's okay. Some are by a tell. Some are by a tell. But she won't be treated the same, and not just by the social media companies. But look, <laughs> look, where is the outrage? Where was the outrage on social media three or four years ago when she actually admitted this? Right. And so, said this. So, so, so Adam brings up a point here about... Elvis and Priscilla, right? Yeah. And and I'm not going to make a big deal out of this because what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to go down the route of, well, this guy did it and it was okay then, which means why is somebody picking on somebody now? Because I'm not going down that route because th times change, things, you know, times change, attitudes change, everything changes, right? And Russell Brand's also not accused of any sleeping with exactly, anybody Exactly, exactly, because anything Russell Brand did was effectively legal, right? Now, and we've had this conversation before, right? Yep. You, you have your moral standards, but we're talking about the law, right? Yeah. And the law says a 16-year-old has the capability of deciding whether she wants to have sex or not, right? And yeah. that's it. That's what we're talking about, the absolutely, law. Absolutely. Right? This is the law in the United Kingdom, and as of 2023 or July 2023 in Japan. The same in Japan, yeah. Yeah. Now, if you want to Japan, raise the law, then that's fine. I don't mind raising the, the age of consent, but you yeah. can't you can't castigate people for staying within the law. No, you just can't do it. And and he he made, apparently he made a big deal about that and said, you know, I want to make sure you are. Yeah. Our, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, of course you would. Anyway, right, let's move on. So apparently a kid's book is saying that um, Stonehenge was built when Britain was black. Uh, well, you... <laughs> when Stonehenge Before was built, we... Britain was black. It was built by black people. Oh, well, I, was, I was about... 1958? Well, you, you, well, first of all, this, this new book that says basically Britain was black before it was white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. When did that okay. happen? When did that happen, mate? And how is that not being called a conspiracy theory? <laughs> when did that happen? How is when that was not Britain being black? Called... Was Anne Berlin really black? Well, who knows? My question is, I, I haven't finished on the last topic, because Sorry. where I sit right now, where I sit right now, um, is roughly 30 miles from the French coast. Okay, so I'm not too far from the French coast. Um, so if you travel that 30 miles, the age of consent is 15. 
Is, is it 15 in France? 15 in France. There you go. I mean, uh, uh, it, it, people, people were shocked when I said it was 13 in Japan. Japan isn't the only one that's at 13. There are other countries as well. Yeah. No, you, you're, you're and right. And Japan's no longer at 13, it's 16. Apparently Merlin is black in the new Winter King series too. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's just move on. I mean, it's, we're not going to get anywhere there, are we? Um, uh, right, so he, here's one for you. Right. And, and it's like... Um, I think you'll like this. It's, it's kind of where the thumbnail came from. Right? Are you going to put something up on the screen? No, no, I'm. I'm not. I'm not going to put something up because history expert reveals the reason your boyfriend can't stop thinking about the Roman Empire. I've never thought about the Roman Empire. <laughs> I didn't think so either. But right. So apparently, apparently, what? Apparently, yeah. people are saying that. Men think about the Roman Empire all the time. Do they? I don't know. I mean, any men in the chat want to say, do you really give the Roman Empire a lot of thought? Because according to this article on, in the New York Post, right? <laughs> so TikToker Ali Nimb, this is a big trend on TikTok, posted on of September course. the 16th asking her boyfriend how often he thinks about the Roman Empire. And the, the video, which has been viewed more than 3 million times, right? Good old TikTok. Yep. So her boyfriend admitted he thinks about the Roman Empire about three times a week. Now, at this point, I'm thinking, is the Roman Empire a euphemism for something else? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but no, apparently it's a Roman it Empire. Is it time to play dress up? <laughs> I don't know. But apparently a lot of cool <laughs> shit happened back then. I've got Marcus Aurelius's book. I try to watch documentaries on it all the time. He added he's been thinking about the Roman Empire ever since he was a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, I, I'm, I'm going to venture that maybe the Roman Empire is a code word for something else. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> so, I really do. Former bachelorette Hannah Brown asked her fiancé, Adam Woolock, the same question in a TikTok video posted on September 15th, to which he responded that he thinks about the period pretty consistently. <laughs> <laughs> you mean because what actually happened was no, let, no. Me, let me let me no no you've got to hear this first before you start trying to explain this because I'm big into the martial arts he explained every time I fight people I think about walking into the coliseum <laughs> And so I'm, assume, I'm assuming he means in the days of the Romans when he would be fighting gladiators and lions, not just now when he would be buying a ticket. <laughs> so basically, what what you're trying to tell me is, for TikTok clout, a well rehearsed scene where he told him exactly what to say was yeah. put up. Yeah. So men, I think, to our core, were warriors. He said. We have to be ready for battle at all times. And the Roman Empire is all about battle. It's common sense. The Roman Empire was actually not about battle. The Roman Empire was about in, in, in assimilating societies and turning them into basically Romans. It was yeah. not about, you know, battling them. It was about assimilating them and making them Romans. Because they didn't have enough men to rule by the sword, so they made everybody a bloody Roman. And it worked brilliantly for, what, 2,000 years or whatever. Yeah, and, it, and, then it, and then it all collapsed. It all oh, yeah, but as it always does. As you'll find out on Sunday, why it collapses. And you know what, John? With that, I think we leave them wanting. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, there, there's... Yeah, okay. I can leave the other ones for Monday. I think that we've had enough <laughs> okay. of our wise words and our wise cracking. But if you have enjoyed the show, don't no, forget to but, leave a like. Uh, what I, I was actually, I was actually, I tell you what, I'll do a poll. No, I can't do a poll and leave it up because it dies. 
should have done it see if should have done the Roman thing earlier because I was I tell you what on Monday we'll do a poll and I want you well, to be honest and they think don't, they don't they don't do you think, think about, about the Roman Empire? Empire. <laughs> they don't think they don't think about the Roman fucking Empire I'm telling you now maybe when I, mean, I watched Gladiator I thought about the Roman Empire but I don't think about it since <laughs> My name is Maximus Aurelius, to a murdered son, husband, to a murdered wife. That's it. I will have my vengeance. Unleash hell. Yes, I am Russell Crowe. Uh, right, I do okay. Beat people up telephones. The yeah, people in uh, front of Judea. <laughs> yeah, do you think about them much? <laughs> well, I think about them more than I know. think about the Roman Empire. <laughs> In fact, you know the one thing I think about more than the Roman Empire and the people's front of Judea is the Knights of Knee. <laughs> we are the Knights who say Knee. <laughs> and with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, if you have enjoyed the show, please leave a like in the... Right now, leave a fucking like. We would really appreciate it. <laughs> but second of all, if you are not subscribed to the channel... Please subscribe right now. And third of all, you know, it's in the pinned uh, comment. Please head over to Kofi or Patreon or here on YouTube. Click the join button, whatever you please, and consider supporting us to make this show bigger, better, more funny. But that share button, hit that goddamn share button and send more people here because they need to see it. You need them to see it. We need to build this community. John, I'm reclining. Tell them to F off. People of the world, thank you for attending this, this beautiful Friday night that has made me gloriously happy. I hope it's been good. No, I hope it's been great for you. Welcome to my party, we're just getting started A life is a dream or a nightmare scarring Hand me a drink cause I think I'm going all in Get me a shrink, who can catch me when I'm falling? Cover up my scars, flip the handlebars Crash it in my car, wake up in a bar I'll be a superstar, just on my avatar This world is so bizarre, empty out the reservoir Yeah Six shots, yeah, straight to the face And I wanna get lost, I'm sick of this place Don't know how to stop when I'm feeling this way So I'm taking six shots till I'm feeling okay I think I'm going crazy Don't think I'll get on safe So I'm taking six shots all straight to the face I'm taking six shots, are you coming with me? I'm taking six shots, yeah, straight to the face And I wanna get lost, I'm sick of this place Don't know how to stop when I'm feeling this way So I'm taking six shots till I'm feeling okay I think I'm going crazy Don't think I'll get on Straight to the face I'm taking six shots Are you coming with me? Sometimes you need to let loose Grab juice, get goose Tattoos, taboos, get screwed Loosen up buttercup All those hate comments Will never make you feel enough We're all adequate graduates Hearts full of calluses But we know calculus Damn, ain't that fabulous Can't wait to apply All those mathematicus But we can't get a job That pays Enough, I'm about to pop off. Fuck you, you're lost. We all know that we never really want a boss. So I'ma do what I want to. Something I can't undo. Yeah, I'ma do what I want to. Something I can't undo. I'm taking six shots, yeah, straight to the face. And I wanna get lost, I'm sick of this place. Don't know how to stop when I'm feeling this way. So I'm taking six shots till I'm feeling okay. I think I'm going crazy, don't think I'll get on set. So I'm taking six shots all straight to the face. I'm taking six shots, are you coming with me? I'm taking six shots, yeah, straight to the face. And I wanna get lost, I'm sick of this place. Don't know how to stop. This way. So I'm taking six shots till I'm feeling okay I think I'm 